Hi, I'm Ginevra. Uh, yeah, I recently graduated from the Master in Paper Technologies, Paper Materials Technologies, here, like straight out of Aula Nove, uh, this very workshop. So for this project, for my final project, I decided to mix business with business as I finally had the chance to commit to uh, rediscovering and um, re, um, like yeah. put new light into my late grandfather's artist, artist studio um, as like the, con the coronation of my years of study here in the academy. Uh, so yeah, this project was born with the intention of documenting the journey, like the rediscovery of this space and requalify and reorganize this, uh, this artist studio. Um, what made it into my actual like, editorial outcome is just the early stages of um, this process of reorganization as it's, again, it's still very much in progress. It was just the beginning, but I needed to like, put a start on it. Uh, this studio space has been in my family for a long time, actually more than five decades. And yeah, after 20 years after the, uh, the death of my grandfather, I'm here to talk about it today, as it was the main topic of my dissertation. Um, what I really needed was to uh, rediscover the archaeology of this space, as uh, you see, the, um, uh, my, my mother uh, also did artistic studies and she then moved on to uh, architecture and my uncle is a graphic designer so during the years this studio has seen the artistic practices of like different members of the family and now it also needed to be a place where I could store my work for these, um, for the, for my, uh, my work of the past years and the, the following to come. So yeah, this is a picture of the studio before I started the process. Uh, it, it really became, over the years, also some kind of storage unit for our family and that was really not the point of this place. So I really wanted to change uh, the situation and um, yeah, give, the, give the, uh, the artworks and the materials all like, the importance that they had to in order to, uh, to enjoy them one more time. So yeah, this is a after picture after the uh, like the the whole process was was done, and I also had to keep in mind of the existing furniture in the in the studio. But we'll we'll see more about that uh, later, and yeah, to make the most of the out of the available space, but. Uh, yeah, giving everything the right uh, destination and allocation. So, yes, uh, briefly, we define uh, archive, the complex of documents that every institute, public or private, or also family or individual, uh, mm, where everyone like gather and preserve uh, this kind of things for various reasons. Uh, the archive represents the system through which it is possible to classify papers and documents based on their nature and importance and to follow all their movements in order to protect them and to track them easily through their course of life. So for an archive to be established certain elements are required the existence and activity of a producer, in this case an artist, but yeah, every, every one of us really, and uh, a specific type of activity carried on by the producer. So it will mean like what, mm, what the main documents 
uh, housed in an archive would be, the conservation of the memory and the quality of the supports, uh, the willingness to preserve that memory, of course, because if no one would want them, <laughs> Uh, and the bond between the memory and a given archival code of practice. So, um, one of the main issues of the reorganization of a private archive is properly understanding what the existing ordering structures are and how they change and develop through time. So, for example, it is important to recognize which situations are purely random and therefore slightly editable, and which are to be considered permanent evidence of the producer's will. So they are worth keeping intact. So not always is possible to have a proper scientific archive list, because that would mean that the archive was previously reordered and organized. Um, but, mm, however, uh, it's usually a good idea to provide each like archive collection its own description, list, and items, and like photographic documentation, which, which was like basically what I uh, put my mind to when approaching this project. And yeah, generally a useful tip for even like beginning to archive your own objects and items would be like provide this list even if not a, scienti a scientific one but uh, kind of put down what what are the items in the collection and how to like properly keep track of them <laughs> really so in this case uh, these like our pictures like loads and loads of pictures that I found in the studio and they were probably like um, uh, different versions of pictures that we're going to put into catalogs for exhibitions but there were really, really like hundreds of them and yeah so they became they become even if they're not like artistic outcomes they represent part of the artistic journey of my grandfather in a way so collectionism is kind of a practical memory so this is referring to what i said earlier about the the will to preserve the memory of the of an archive and what is into what is what is into it so collectionism is yeah it's kind of a practical memory we all are more or less collectors in some way, because we conserve and archive our sentimental and aesthetic heritage for different reasons and according to different criteria. I'm sure that each, like every one of us, has something that they cherish and that they like, that are very close to your hearts and you want to keep them and give them the, like, the proper value. So we try to satisfy the urge to surround ourselves with objects that we choose and that become important in the space we live, and in this case that we operate in, so such as a studio, like an artist studio. And so I try to reflect for my, my project, but really going back to what uh, put me into the academy. Uh, so what does it mean to know through objects, what do objects reveal about our history and society, when our, what are the meanings and information they bring with. So, uh, yeah, what, like, what use we make of the objects we, we surround ourselves of and how they, like, mm, they form a part of our everyday life. So, yeah, these are uh, items from uh, from the, the studio. These are vintage stationary uh, items. So we have crayons, uh, wax pastels, and uh, charcoals, and yeah, chalks, 
um, they, they are a very important part of this collection to me because um, there was like a big selling of uh, stationary items in the early 90s in our neighborhood and my grandfather took all these like stocks of stationery and barely got to, to use them because he, 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 uh, he, never, yeah, he never got the chance to. So I, we now have all these, uh, this vintage representation of what stationery used to look like and it's very retro to look at it. And, but it, I mean, it's also material that is ready to use other than to conserve and preserve. So, yeah, the, the other thing that I investigated oops, a bit in the, in the, in the dissertation was uh, about the family archive, because this was not only a, an artist's studio, but it also represented something very dear to our family, of course. So I, mm, uh, I looked into these kind of uh, questions that were like, presented in different research and studios and, and papers. Uh, so m maybe you do have like, a family archive or maybe you, you do not like, look at it in this kind of way. But uh, yeah, this is like questions about what it could consist of and, and why. Uh, what kind of messages it conveys about the, ident the identity of a family. Of course, every family is different, so different objects in a collection would be different. How emotionally invested is a family towards its own archive and the related history behind it? And does the archive necessarily exist in a physical place or could it be a virtual concept? So maybe also, like, in this case, I had this physical place that I was um, examining, but it also could have been like a group of belongings passed down to generations that could easily move uh, from place to place. And who amongst the family is in charge of owning and curating the archive? And how do families make use of their archives to like connect them with the outside world and what like what's the relationship with everyday life. So how you can probably uh, imagine one of the main elements uh, found inside an archive is photography, like for sure. Uh, photography were uh, always uh, like quoted and included in the autobiographies of authors uh, since the invention of, the, of, the, of itself. And so we are the, um, um, the, the, the um, we that lays, lay eyes on pictures are the point of view of, of the pictures. And we put ourselves in perspective with the pictures that we're seeing, whether it be like, again, an early, 1920th century author or uh, uh, a boy with a violin or a trumpet shot in Naples uh, many years ago by my grandfather. But it may seem that I'm going off track, but I'm just like wanting to emphasize the importance of all these different elements in an archive because these very um, musical instruments that the, the boys are port portrayed with, I, I found them in the studio and they're actually on display, they've been on display for all these years and I could just link them and like see the connection between them. The, the instruments are here now but I know their history and how they're connected to like a moment in the past of uh, the artistic journey of my grandfather too. Mm -hmm. 
It's my grandfather uh, shot the picture. So it's your father? No, no. It's just uh, yeah. There, like, there were a group of um, of boys that um, they were usually like browsing the streets of the neighborhood when where he was living in in Naples at the time, and he. He was already like an artist with a studio, and he also he used to work with like open doors, and like putting music to work along with. And these boys were from like poorish neighborhood, and what they used to do was uh, roam around and ask for uh, tasks, for chores to do in in exchange of like. A little, a little money, and and one day he just like uh, gave them the instruments that they were at his place, and he shot these these pictures of them. So he borrowed these dresses. No, there were. The yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. Exactly, and the the fact that the, there was someone taking their portrait, their picture, was it was like a game for them and uh, these are just two from the series but they're like a whole bunch and you can see them interacting and you can like look into the different dynamics between the different children there was just like one little girl and all these boys and you could see uh, my my grandma my grandmother did like told me a little bit a lot around the, the context because this is one of like the most complete photographic series that we have. Uh, so I was really really curious about what uh, what the yeah what the context was where they were and uh, the fact that uh, in the process of rediscovering the the studio I uh, I noticed that. Like we actually had the instruments. It was really something so again, know, quite quite meaningful. Said before, important of memory. Yeah. And people still alive. Yes, of course. Because I could I could not have known the Otherwise story. Would have been lost. Yes. Yes. And I I mean you cannot really see it from the picture, but you you can see it from the picture and from the um, like from the picture like the boy picture and the the picture that I took in the in the studio that the trumpet really shows the signs of time so is oxidated and is it has like uh, it's not you can see that it's not a new trumpet anymore <laughs> so it's really like the test of time and how can you uh, how, how you can relate the picture to the object itself and I don't know it's one of the issues. yeah one of the issues and what really is mm, a tangible thing that you can uh, acknowledge while studying this kind of uh, spaces so the uh, the preservation of the original like artistic production but also not artistic production in this case uh, is one of the main themes when it comes to artists' uh, legacies. So the goal of instituting uh, an artist archive, but I mean, I guess that is true for archives in general, um, is the conservation and the safety of the historic memory of an artist. Uh, every every archive will follow their own like rules, uh, and it will it will be on its own course. Um, but the the memory of an artist is only like potential in the beginning, as Matteo Boetti was saying uh, before. He has this honor and duty to uh, to to pass on to generations and to uh, people that are interested in the in in his father's works. So this potential memory is like becomes acti active only if there is one or more agents to like uh, make it make it real <laughs> um, so uh, 
the archive of an artist, living or not they may be, uh, is an ever-changing entity, constantly in progress, and it poses questions to be addressed in ever new ways. So pu putting us in the position of uh, adapti ad adapting alongside the archive, and because also posing the right questions will um, will will help us to preserve it and like in a in 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 the best way possible for that archive in in particular. So in an artist's archive, we generally find all their documents, materials, uh, artworks, and the byproduct of an artwork too, meaning all those secondary outcomes that, um, that lead up to the finished piece. So the, like the, the most basic one would be the finished artwork on the left and uh, preparatory drawings and uh, so yeah, all the, the studies that an artist would make to uh, bring his like final piece to, to mind. So th this combination between the uh, actual artworks and all the things surrounding the artworks is what really is important in, a, in an artist's studio, in an artist's archive, because the combination of these, like all these materials consulted is what uh, will tell the, the thing most, most near to the truth. In, a, in this kind of, of context. So uh, all the documents that are found in an archive should not be uh, separated because they're more, uh, more useful when they're together and they paint like a more general picture and most more complete picture of what you're, you would be researching. So what is a document? On the right, I included some, uh, some examples of things that I, find, I found in the studio that are, um, that are actual documents and that are important to in, the, uh, in the research. And again, to put in perspective and paint a more accurate picture of uh, what like the artistic journey of an artist would be. So there are um, uh, dedica the d dedications, like uh, there are museum pamphlets, newspaper articles about uh, its own, like his own exhibitions. There are other kind of documents that may not seem related to the art itself, but they are there, and I have to assume they're there for a reason. And so, for example, the one on the uh, bottom right is like lyrics from a folk Naples song with the actual chords to, um, to play it. Uh, and again, uh, receipts from museum exhibitions, so uh, the, the document could be paper-based, so yeah, paper documents, photographic documents, pictures took of uh, the artist it's itself, or, or paper, or, or pictures of the artist, and audiovisual materials and digital sources, if it's the case of computer-generated files. These are other examples of what I got the chance to find out. So it really, uh, everything is uh, like a witness from the, the period in time they were acquired. So this is like a, uh, the cover of a photographic paper box. And this is the, the same. That's one of the uh, projector from his dark room. And yeah, so an artist's archive usually also has 
an artist's library. That means uh, a catalog of books that they may have consulted during their artistic career in order to research uh, or to take inspiration from. And it may also include publications about their, their work and their career. So exhibition catalogs and uh, yeah, catalogs of their artwork, where their artwork may be have publicated. Um, so these books lose their bibliothecary interest and they become like the into the, they come into this ju the jurisdiction of the artist's archive because they they came to play a part in their uh, in their artistic formation and they may include handwritten notes or i don't know notes letters correspondency um, drawings so yeah artist library it is and um, so in in my my publication i included uh, a, a alphabetic catalog of all the magazines and books that i encountered so that i could have like a, a general uh, picture of what they were and also now I was able and yeah able to to consult them easily too because I before that time I didn't really uh, had the like the, the idea of where they all were because they were not all in one place and so yeah the, just the act of um, listing them all i i got the sense of what i could like mm, use make use of so this is a so preventive conservation um, the different uses of paper the environment in which it is kept and the external causes again and even sudden accidents uh, lead to its degradation. Um, the paper's original state, just like all structures made of organic material, changes with time, becoming, becoming more fragile and favoring alterations of the graphic media which it supports. So preventive conservation, how will you will explore much better <laughs> next week uh, aims at avoiding, arresting or minimizing the possible causes of material decay. So by adopting a range of measures and actions to condition the items, we can limit and reduce to a minimum the relentless decay that it causes to, to yeah. So these are some examples of what I recollected through this uh, reorganization journey. Uh, these are some examples of what poor environment condition can lead to, uh, especially if not taken well care of uh, while you're like in, in case of owning such, such things. So this is a seal screen print on uh, lucid paper, no, la carta Transpire. da luce, transparent, transparent. Trans uh, tracing paper. Tracing paper. Um, so yeah, these are all effect, the, the effects of uh, dust mixed with humidity, mixed with uh, poor light conditions and uh, yeah, generally poor external elements as we were saying also the the cur curves and uh, tears of in the paper uh, missing pieces uh, this you could tell that it was stored alongside like a 
smaller book that covered the main portion of the um, of the cover, but what it was more exposed to like the uh, the environment really caused uh, a damage of the of those parts insects too <laughs> so and also light the the the, the light really is uh, one of the main elements that could lead up to uh, the degradation of paper. So during the, um, the months leading up to the writing of the, this project for my, like for my final project, me and my family um, carried out a thoughtful and uh, yeah, assessment of the space and we did a little bit of decluttering of the space so it means we got rid of in a very thoughtful way of everything that had not like an artistic historical or like affective um, like matter and importance uh, and value but the main problem that we had to face was the one regarding the space itself so the um, this studio is uh, is not owned by us is owned by the, the building so we could not resolve in a in a definite way um, this uh, kind of issue that you can see in the picture so and also being a semi basement it suffers uh, like all the mm, all the structures suffer from uh, rising damp so it means that water coming from the ground uh, will be uh, come to the surface um, in a very prominent way if the um, um, if the waterproofing is not installed correctly in the like structure of the, the walls and the building um, so it will show up with uh, white cells and also it will result in the peeling off of paint and plaster as well uh, and because like the the level of humidity is very very high uh, it will cause mold too so um, we could not um, eradicate the problems once and for all again because this is something due to the construction of the building so uh, what we could do was to hire ex like um, experts uh, to uh, kind of um, uh, mm? Yes, to, to restore um, a bit like of decency to these walls and reapply uh, plaster and paint and we also did install some uh, salt paste dehumidifiers uh, and uh, to keep track like from, from now on uh, of the general situations, we installed thermo hygrometers in different uh, areas of the studio. So something that would track not only the um, the temperature, but the humidity as well. And it also helps us uh, recording the highest point uh, of humidity that it tracks so we can get a sense so when when we were done with the works and I was done with this phase of the project uh, the humidity was kind of okay so for paper to be properly conserved it should be along 50 55 percent of humidity in like a room uh, but now 
and it was back in March. So now uh, it has increased significantly. <laughs> 70, 72%. Yes. So <laughs> that's not good. That's not what you want. Um, so another thing that you can um, uh, you can think of when uh, organizing an, an, an archive uh, is uh, the furniture and storage. So how will your paper-based documents or artworks um, be um, taken care of in terms of storage and uh, yeah, accommodation basically. So um, how can you establish your needs in terms of storage equipment for your collection? Uh, you could list the types of existing storage equipment available to you and note their conditions. So um, note if additional equipment will be needed and how to generally improve the storage situation. Note how types of objects are or can be organized in cabinets, racks, shelves. Indicate if objects are crowded or stacked and if if so, this must be fixed and changed. Uh, note how individual objects are or can be contained, so organization and containment go hand in hand, and it's uh, one of the things that you can really um, be in charge of. Are there current containers appropriate and providing the artwork an adequate physical protection? So lastly, are objects stable and set securely in their containers? Are objects adequately secured and cushioned to prevent them from moving or sliding when being accessed? So for example, um, we decided to invest in a um, metal steel, dro yeah, um, this unit made of 10 A1 drawers uh, to, to store all the, uh, like, yeah, mostly all the, um, the paper based uh, and pl planari. Due dimensionali, come? Yeah, the, the, yeah the, the flat artworks, so not, not the canvases on the, uh, not the paintings and stuff, but all the, um, yeah, per paper based and flat artworks that were previously stored in this wooden open air rack shelving unit. Um, so I decided to um, put all the silk screen prints in five of the of the drawers. Um, those um, those silk screen prints were again previously in this. Uh, in these shelves, uh, they were stored in not appropriate uh, material folders, open on three sizes, and <coughs> also um, they were stacked all on top of each other. So this could really damage, on the long run, the the paper. Uh, and also, um, so, so yeah, what I did was um, archive the seal screen prints. I decided to start from the seal screen prints because uh, they were I, a really um, contained number of them. And I could go through the, the process that I will, that in the future I will, um, I will, I will carry out on, all the other artworks, but I could start from from the beginning to uh, to the finish line with the seal screens, and uh, I could do like a, like a prototype of what I will do in the future. So um, the first step be before putting them in their new home 
was uh, doing some sort of dry cleaning. I think you will do a lot more of this next week with the conservation um, classes. So just to remove the excess of dust that could have accumulated on the, on the surface. Again, they were previously stored in uh, open air folders. They were not properly enclosed in like between, you know. <laughs> and so especially on the, uh, along the, um, the margins, there was uh, a lot of, of dust and also combined with the high level of humidity of the room, uh, it creates this sort of dusty paste that really is not something that you could easily swipe off. And what I did was something like uh, what we were talking before with uh, Matteo Boetti. So I did, I did some mm, sort of ca cataloging, like uh, putting a unique alphanumeric number on the back of each specimen and then uh, specifying what, where it was stored in which, uh, in which side of which drawer. The title, if I, if I had the chance to know the title, I had to do some kind of cross research between all the catalogs and pub publication where they were previously uh, featured. So I could tell what their, like if they had a title, uh, I could tell the exact num exact year they were made. You, you can see that not, not all of them has a, a year because some of them I could just not trace the period that they were made in. Uh, the dimensions, of course, a description, so especially for those that do not have a title or the title does not have, like does not coincide with what it's representing, a description of what was visually appearing uh, to the viewer and notes if anything of note was showing. Again, uh, same as before, I had this, uh, I had to, um, uh, I caught a glimpse of what he was saying about archives because uh, in, in my case too, there were some, some prints that were numbered but not signed and vice versa, some that were neither. So I had to make uh, distinctions based on this, uh, of the presence of the numbering and, and whatnot. Yes, there are some like in museum collections and some that were bought, but I I do not have all the um, of the all the information about like transactions and actual selling uh, selling receipts of the of the artworks from the all artistic uh, career, but I did find, I mean, some of the, talking about the, the silk screen printing, the silk screen prints, I, these were, I mean, I, I have some that are the whole, like, yeah. one to 70, yeah. the whole series, and some, some, I have, just the one, so the one that he keep for he kept for himself, just to like archiving reasons, I guess. And but some o also canvases. I have lots of them, uh, but some are just not not here. They may have been at some time, at some like in, at some time. Uh, during the years, but now there, there's, I don't know, some are in museums, but most of them are in private collection or gifted to friends or fellow artists. I also uh, found a folder 
with um, prints or drawings from contemporary artists that he, like were in his circle. So they, my, my grandmother explained that they would do this kind of exchange. Uh, so uh, I have other artists' drawings and, uh, and artworks and something, something like that. And again, they're part of this artist's collection because at some point uh, they were relevant in his like career because he was hanging out with these artists and he was doing exhibitions with them so it, it makes sense all together because also uh, it, it makes consulting everything easier in a way because you can cross-reference with the other artists where he was doing exhibitions and does it check out that they make this exhibition together and that so if he like if i have this print from this artist and i know that this print was exposed was like exhibited in an exhibition in 1972 then i know that if he exchanged it for that so it must have been in like a frame a, a given frame of time so it makes everything easier like to to do the this kind of cross research and so these are uh, for example in my case the whole content of the studio was potentially a document to me because um, everything was a witness of how the space had changed and how the space had been used and repurposed through the years. So lots of materials ready to be used. There are, again, all the stationery that I told you about before. Lots of um, paper, cardboard and, uh, and whatnot. And, but also uh, I also these seal screen uh, frames that were stripped <laughs> yes. and that could be uh, and that could be used once again uh, also um, uh, seal screen frames uh, with the with the image still on top that I could uh, uh, try and reincorporate in future artworks, for example, like printing what my grandfather used to, to print and to... Um, or even materials that are no longer of use, but that they uh, made... that they made it into, like, an aesthetic witness of the passage of time. This on the left is a leftover seal screen printing ink that uh, dried out and made this kind of cracks and of course I, I, I kept it because I mean look at it <laughs> I don't know I, uh, uh, and I, I put it on a shelf and now it's like on display because I don't know it, it just says that something that uh, it, it tells a story of the yeah of the the time passing by and uh, what was previously used and no longer can be used but it can be of some importance so the uh, the so-called archival impulse to which i am not immune and was probably the driving force that uh, led me to uh, this kind of, of process. Um, is an, um, has been a growing practice in contemporary art uh, for quite some time now. And I, I just had the, the opportunity to catch a glimpse of what, um, of what, mm, 
knowing and gaining a new knowledge of uh, the passage of time and like through objects and possibly giving new objects a new life and uh, also giving previously used objects a new meaning with the, 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 the twist of art. So for example, this is like I found sketches and uh, different attempts for a seal screen drawing, tracing, transparent, the, the thing that you put on the, on the seal screen frame to, uh, to <coughs> what's the addition? On the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. The uh, yes, emotion. that emotion. Yeah, the the thing that you put on top of, of the frame to to let it let the, the yeah to the the, the thing really that negative. yes yeah. yes <laughs> the thing that will appear to the sunscreen so to the seal screen frame and that you can then print with. So I there were lots of attempts of different images and I found them and I repurposed them and used them for cyanotype printings and uh, so even if they did not make it into the original final artwork uh, I now have repurposed in a way that I, I know more about that material and that document and that I actually uh, had the chance to include in my own experiments and practice and of course again these pictures that I found uh, loads of just call for some big uh, panel assemblage artwork that I will look into in the in the future so yes this was uh, Yes, with a uh, grandfather, one of my grandfather's like transparent Negative. negatives that I found in the studio. In the studio. Yes, yeah. yes, I found the negative yeah. that was intended to be the uh, the main uh, graphic for a silk screen printing printing, but you can see that is. Like it has shadows, it has, it has like, yeah, some, some sort of double exposure that was not meant to be there. But I thought that for a cyanotype would be, would be kind of more appropriate that uh, it, would, it would give to the cyanotype this sort of uh, three dimensional. This in particular, no, this is on cotton paper. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and that's it. Questions, thoughts? Have you got like your own archive? Would you be interested in setting up your own archive in a like in a small scale way even? Or I don't know if you already have like a safe space that you can locate your your production in not yet. <laughs> not yet. Mm -hmm. But really an archive for myself or our family archive. It's okay both because not uh, for myself maybe in the future. It's, it's and what easy. about a, a family archive? Do you uh, I don't come, I don't come from a family of artists so it's, it's but I mean anything could be worth of archiving I guess. Mm -hmm. It could be, it could be seen as clutter. Sometimes also, like because things go through uh, a cycle of uh, of significance that go uh, go so far after we are gone, and so even if they stay in our family, they like are. 
uh, that who, who will come after us maybe will not have the same object will not give the same object the same meaning that we gave that in our golden days so it's that's the kind of thing that that memory does i guess for example uh, i'm sure everyone has a photographic archive from his family yeah. or they yeah, have sure. family like i found my grandparents photographs in a in a furniture you know and nobody knew who was on the picture because they they're, they're dead yeah. and nobody told us so I know some people in the picture, but many of them I don't know who they are. Yeah. And it's a pity because you don't, you don't have the witness, yeah. you don't have the story told by anyone. So it, I think uh, she was really good in uh, keeping the memory of, the, of her grandfather. Yes, right. He was an artist, so she had. Uh, a more complicated uh, uh, question to solve, but uh, it's, it's the same, uh, no matter the object. The goal is the same, and you have to keep the memory, and you have to keep the memory with, with respect of the person who owned the, that object. So that's the artist part, I think, to understand yeah. what was the yes. use, what because was the... Yeah, I also, what kept me from, from starting this project long ago was the fact that I was not sure that I was going to, uh, to know and to understand everything that I was going to, to find in the process. So it was, uh, it was, it was really like blocking me uh, and preventing me from like actually making the most out of this space that uh, that was really uh, a kind of a shame that I did not do it earlier uh, because um, yeah I like during the years I started to feel uh, that this studio was like a known place because it was um, very close to my own but virtually I felt it like so far away and I had the feeling that I could not uh, include it into like an everyday routine and it would also always be destined to like specific projects that needed maybe more space so but having got the chance to uh, to explore it for like an, a proper project was 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 what really put me into the the mindset of being able to do something something useful and something I don't know important to my family and to what will come afterwards because also um, small and private archives are really worth cherish for the future because they are. Uh, I don't know. They are. Uh, they, they paint uh, a picture of the historical and cultural context that we live in. Either way, no matter what, it be uh, a big museum collection. It's also like the domestic. I don't know. Micro history that counts and that will continue to count. Yes, of course. Yes, you can take a postcard from <laughs> the <laughs> from the collection. Yeah, tell us more about it. Uh, I just wanted to bring by because yeah, the slides are good and all, but I mean, being being able to to feel a bit like touch uh, and I don't know, doing something that I oops, that I spent years in also leading up to the this last past few months so just being able to 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 witness what i what i found 
and these are uh, oh, museums and exhibition pamphlets uh, from exhibitions that my grandfather exhibited him like, and so there are some of his works features and also the objects that I I, <laughs> I found this this is um, Hmm? Marinetti. Marinetti. No, it's not a magnet. It's like <laughs> some. Yeah, uh, it's some <laughs> copper element of the old electrical systems. Something <laughs> like this. I, uh, I don't know. You My have uncle. To study more about it. Yes. Yes. I, I look into it <laughs> so more. You can find very weird things in archives. So this is a. Uh, a leftover uh, from a, a glass company uh, that gave uh, my grandfather the yeah the, the byproduct of their production, and I think that he like based on like the prints and the sketches that I found, I think that he used uh, he used this kind of crystal shaped uh, elements to do like light projections in the dark room so to uh, to do some sort of I, I don't know uh, abstract compositions uh, with the projector and and lights and and what else this I, I still haven't figured out <laughs> I'm not sure. Something about photograph microscope. microscope. Should be. I'm not sure, but should be. I, I found it in the um, in the in the cameras okay. uh, cabinet. Okay. But I, I I don't know if it was some part of a, like Light. a flash. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it but like yeah, it yeah. it looks. Yeah. Like it's mirrory, yeah. but it's mm. ups, uh, also uh, oxidated. Ah, for sure. Posso perdonare. I want to say thanks, Ginevra. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>